So thank you all for coming. Before I begin, I'd like to make a short statement about the Baltimore City Speed Camera Program. And let me first say that I look forward to working with the City Council as it prepares to do its investigation. And I agree that the citizens of Baltimore deserve and should know all the facts about the program. I'm hopeful that the Council's involvement will provide the administration with an opportunity to get all the facts out there within the proper context so that the citizens will learn the whole story and can be made accurate, um, can be more accurately uh, aware and so they can determine what did and did not take place. I know that most of the members of the council honestly want to understand the facts and the issues involved with the speed camera uh, program, but I must say that I'm deeply disturbed by some of the irresponsible rhetoric and accusations that have been made against the administration and members of the council committed to getting all of the facts. It is again irresponsible and unfounded to throw out wild accusations before any documents have been viewed or requested. Uh, the purpose of an investigation is to look at all the facts and let that guide you to an outcome. But some seem to want to choose an outcome um, and let the, you know, the, to shoot, choose an outcome that they want and make the facts fit their own agenda. I think we have to do better than that. The stakes are too high, and making sure the public gets the information it deserves must be our top goal. We owe it to our constituents to strive to be good examples of treating each other with proper civility. And we owe it to our constituents who have put their trust in us to guide the city. And I'll continue to work with all relevant parties to get out the information as quickly as possible so that we can resolve the matter and move forward with getting a program back online that is accurate and that will make our community safer. Thank you. Do you have any timetable on when uh, you would expect or would want this process to go forward for the investigation and then getting the program back? Um, no, this online? is a council. This is a uh, council investigation. I don't. I certainly wouldn't um, propose to direct and give them timeline. Okay. okay. What about your own timeline for the administration? Has there been anything set up yet? The timeline for the. Um, for the RFP, mm -hmm. and it, right. So that that's on that's a public document. The the request for proposal. I, you know, we're working we're working on um, getting that out. Sorry, not the we're working on getting a request for proposal. When I talked to you about it initially, when we when we talked about the break from Brentford, mm -hmm. separate from separation for Brentford, I talked about what the goals were: mm -hmm. uh, separating red light and speed, as well as uh, getting and getting rid of what is so-called the bounty system, where you're getting paid per ticket. Uh, and we're working on getting a, an RFP out uh, that meets those needs. And I said before that the goal is to get it right, not to get it fast. Will you wait till after the investigation is complete to issue the RFP? It's too early to say. I don't know what the timeline for the council is. Well, the, 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 the recent approved item, can you just give us some sense of what your, the, the $160,000 or whatever, what was... What, what is that for, and what, what is that money going to be used to do, and what are you expecting from that? So I can get um, Mr. Johnson to get you a, full, a, a fuller uh, explanation of that uh, contract. I don't want to give you uh, misinformation. I just don't have all the details in front of me. Uh, should we contact Mr. Johnson's office? Or we'll follow up. Out? Kevin can follow up with you. Okay, mm -hmm. In your opening comments, uh, I assume you're referring to counting the stokes, or were there others that you were uh, talked about as well? I'm not interested in getting, you know, identifying individuals. I just think it, I take what I do very seriously in the, in the sense that there's a lot, the, our constituents put a lot of trust in us, and they expect us to act in a way uh, that is uh, respectful and civil. And um, whether I agree or disagree with uh, any uh, other elected official, I I strive in every uh, communication, whether it's public or private, to treat them with the respect uh, that they deserve as a representative of the public. And um, I think we would all be better if that were um, a manner, you know, a, if that was followed more broadly. Do you feel that your administration or anyone in transportation ever didn't tell the whole story in relaying reasons for um, the speed cameras to be shut down? I think at every point we strive to give the information that is requested. 
um, you know, there, this, um, you know, you've looked at this enough to know this is um, a complex uh, situation with multiple vendors, um, with, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that are being juggled. And in order to make sure that we protect the city's position as well as protect the, the council's uh, right to know when questions were being asked, you know, you, you, you have to walk a fine line. And my administration strives to give the information uh, as requested. So will the council be getting the, um, the audit report that um, has been discussed? The count, the, we'll make sure that every document that is non-privileged will be shared. Is that still, though, considered a privileged document? Uh, I believe so at this time. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, there was a protest today about the uh, Waxer Center, mm -hmm. and um, you saw there were um, quite a few people that showed up to uh, support that protest. Uh, ultimately, uh, you're in this, uh, the board voted uh, for the lease. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about your thought process in approving that and, and what, what you want to see out of the situation? So first, I mean, let's start with the fact that I made it very clear to the um, the members of the the public that came in, su in support, the users of the Waxer Center, the seniors that uh, use that center, I made it very clear uh, that we should have done more outreach. And I apologize that that wasn't done. Um, the Waxer Center is, uh, you know, one of the senior centers that we have in the city that gets a lot of use. There's a, there's a big following. I've been uh, several times to the Waxter Center uh, to participate in programs, to participate in outreach that they do to the com community, with the community. They are a vital part of the fabric of Baltimore. But the buildings, as many uh, in the city, have has fallen in disrepair. And we want to make sure that we're able to afford the investments uh, to keep the building um, moving forward so it'll be able to be used by more seniors uh, in the future. So it's twofold. We always try to get the most out of all the city buildings. This is not the first time that the Waxer Center has been uh, used, uh, that a lease has been made with an outside entity to use some of the space that wasn't being utilized by the Waxer Center for its uh, programs. And uh, so it's, it's not uncommon that the Waxer Center or any city-owned building is used to the to its uh, highest and best, best use or the maximum use of the space that's available. Um, but when we, when we um, ask existing users to share space with new uh, tenants or new users, there should be outreach done ahead of time, and that wasn't done. And, um, you know, for that, we apologize and made the commitment to have ongoing communications about the conditions of the building and to make sure that uh, the two uses of the building, um, that, that both of them uh, have their needs met. Mayor, I want to follow up with just one thing you said, and this is probably more of a technical question, but you said privileged information. If, if the council issues a subpoena for that information that you've agreed to keep confidential through the agreements, are you going to um, ignore that subpoena or not? Are you going to say that information is privileged and take the position that... So if we have a contractual obligation to keep uh, information confidential, that's the, that is the beginning and the end. That's, that's the position. So even if the subpoena, the, the material is subpoenaed, you're going to not go along with that subpoena because it's been considered privileged. Is that what you're saying? So are you asking me if I'm going to put the city at risk of being sued? Well, yeah. <laughs> I think you know the answer to that. <laughs> okay. Getting back to the Wexler Center, mm -hmm. Council President uh, Young talked about that for the last two to three years he's been hearing complaints about the bathrooms and, mm -hmm. and others. How did the, this continue to go on so long that it got all these people upset and coming today? There's, um, let's just put everything into context. You know that we've been uh, trying to work our way out of the Great Recession. The budgets that I've had as mayor have had significant deficits and we've worked very hard to stay on top of the maintenance of our buildings at the same time, knowing that we're been, we've been asked to contract the budget year after year after year. Unfortunately, um, this that building and several other have had delayed maintenance uh, because of uh, the the uh, budget shortfalls that we've had. Uh, we recognize that we need to do better, and as we are growing out of the, the uh, Great Recession, we're looking for ways that we can maximize uh, the use of the building so we can get additional resources to invest in upkeep of these, this building. Um, we made the commitment 
to the seniors and, and the members of the board uh, that there will be uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars invested, well, more than a million dollars invested in uh, the Waxer Center, including several hundred on, um, you know, the upkeeps of the, the bathroom and things that, that were discussed. You know, I wish that I could say that we did not, um, that, that there's no building in the city that suffered as we, you know, try to grow out of the, um, to, to build our way out of the, the Great Recession, but that's not, that's not true. It's the same in Baltimore as it is with many cities that um, have had to put, whether it's transportation projects on the back burner or building maintenance uh, uh, projects on the back burner, um, as we, um, you know, build but back up. What they seem to indicate, talking to some of them, is that there were really emergency conditions like bathrooms without stalls and, and divides that would seem to be something that, as part of ongoing maintenance, the city could do. What you're talking about is what seems like a major renovation. So why wasn't, like, day-to-day, mm -hmm. -day, uh, you know, fixing of stalls and stuff done? No. Um, there's plenty of maintenance that was done. That was not. And while, um, you know, I certainly am making no excuses and the point that we need to do better and our commitment to the Waxer Center is to do better. Um, we have the Waxer Center and several other buildings around the city who have had delayed maintenance uh, because of budget shortfalls. And we strive to identify those, uh, those um, buildings, identify the work that needs to be done, and to get back on track with that work. At the Board of Estimates today um, approved uh, what was it, two two hundred thousand and uh, two hundred fifty thousand for bathrooms and police stations that apparently were in the same sort of condition. Is uh, and um, the renovation of a roof on a firehouse. Is that the same problem of, of uh, these are listed under as emergency? Um, so I can't speak to that those specific contracts, mm -hmm. but. It doesn't matter if you go to police stations, whether you go to recreation centers, whether you go to senior centers, um, there, there is much more work that needs to be done um, and it has had to be done than we've had money to uh, pay for them over the past few years. Um, it's not uh, a situation that is um, unique to Baltimore. Uh, cities all over the country, as, we're, as they face uh, budget constraints, as we face budget constraints, are in the same position, and we strive to try to be creative as possible, to look for ways to look for additional resources, just like with the Waxer Center, to look for additional tenants. So the space that we have available, we're using to the, to the best that we can, so we can put additional resources into the renovations of these buildings. I'm looking forward to um, the work that we're doing with the uh, casino. As you know, some of the money that is going to come out of the table games, that's going to go directly towards uh, renovation and the work that we have with capital improvements for our recreation centers. So we'll be able to speed the pace of those repairs as well. Um, today, one, a couple of audits um, came out mm -hmm. for the different uh, retirement systems. Mm -hmm. um, are you um, happy with the direction of those systems? Do you think more work needs to be done? And if so, what, what work needs to be done uh, to improve the health of those systems? I think the... Uh I don't think any of our systems, we, we've, took a, we've taken a tremendous hit uh, with the downturn in the economy, and I know that we're still growing our way out of it. Uh, I think the direction is the right direction, and as long as the, uh, the board, uh, the boards continue to look for ways that we can create efficiencies and get the best return possible, we'll be doing the best that we can for the members of the system. Um, you know, I think in order to do that, it makes sense to continue to have the regular audits that we do because it helps us to identify ways that we can create more efficiencies uh, in the system. But we're in, by no means fully recovered uh, from uh, the hit that was taken. And I'm, I would be loath to say that any of us would say we are where we want to be, um, you know, when you take a look at your statements that come in. One of, one of the bills, I know that was the last question, but we'll follow But that, you know, that, sh that shouldn't matter to you, right? <laughs> one of the bills on the ERS changes is, is currently, I think you could say, is, is stalled in committee. If there's, there's debate going on, I'm not sure whether it will advance. Um, how is that one of the repair bills from the fire and police pension? The ERS new hires. The new hires? Correct. I don't know what the status is. Do you know? The status is, is that uh, we're currently um, uh, in negotiations. Um, I think that there will be some changes to the, to the bill, and uh, but as the chairman, I think that he will be calling a, uh, another work session in the coming weeks. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. You guys hold one second. She's going to clarify something. Sorry. Hmm? I want to just make sure that I was clear. Um, I know that we have agreements with the with respect to the subpoena and the documents. Uh, we have agreements uh, that we make contractual agreements, but we are working very hard. Uh, the, right now, that the the, the the current status is we are working to make sure with our partners that we made the agreements with and the council to find ways to get the information that they need without putting the city in jeopardy for lawsuits. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.